The Blackburn Skua is, like many other contemporary aircraft designs of the mid-1930s, an aeroplane that had good performance when it was first proposed, but which was outclassed when it entered service. Despite this, the aircraft gave solid service at the start of the Second World War, serving through some of the hardest battles and managed to chalk up a good record in the limited span that it was in combat. Designed to a 1934 requirement for a two-seat carrier-based dive bomber, the skewer would have its specifications changed to also act as a fighter. This is not a great idea, as the requirements for these two types are very different. Any fighter that has to carry a second crewman is going to be at a great disadvantage to a single-seat fighter. But there are good reasons for the decision. Firstly, the Fleet Air Arm, the organisation that flies the Royal Navy's aircraft, understood the difficulties at that time of trying to fly and navigate alone across open ocean. A second crewman, who could assist in this by using specialist equipment, was a massive help to a pilot operating at sea. And it's notable that this idea was so entrenched that it was even stipulated in later carrier fighters, like the Ferry Fulmar. The FAA also didn't plan for its carrier aircraft to be tangling with land-based fighters. British thinking before the Second World War was that the Royal Navy's carriers and fleets would primarily defend themselves with guns from air attack. Their aircraft carriers featured heavily armoured decks that could shrug off attacks from bombers and protect aircraft within the ship when under attack. This heavy armour, combined with the doctrine of not using a deck to store aircraft, as was the norm within the US and Japanese navies at the time, meant that the Royal Navy carriers operated much fewer numbers of aircraft than their contemporaries. As a result, it made sense to have those aircraft act as jack-of-all-trades, because they were available in such limited numbers. As an aside, if you are interested in understanding more about the Royal Navy's carrier philosophy, their carriers, aircraft and the battles they fought, you should check out armouredcarriers.com. They're an excellent source on this subject, and I'll put a link to their website in the description and to their YouTube channel at the end of the video. Anyway, the Skewer was designed to act as a naval dive bomber with the added ability to shoot down reconnaissance aircraft that were shadowing the fleet. It could also help protect against enemy bombers. To meet these requirements, the Skewer had a pretty respectable armament for the time. Four 303 Browning machine guns were mounted in the wings, added to by a single Lewis or Vickers K machine gun operated by the navigator to protect the rear of the aircraft. It carried a 500 pound bomb under the fuselage on a bomb crutch as its main striking weapon, and could also carry small 20 and 40 pound bombs under the wing. As pointed out, the skewer was a compromise design and its performance showed that. Fitted with a Bristol Perseus radio engine, which produced just over 900 horsepower with emergency boost, the aircraft's maximum speed on paper was only 225 miles per hour. But in many ways, the skewer was a thoroughly modern aircraft, especially in contrast to the planes it replaced. It was the FAA's first monoplane aircraft, as well as its first with retractable landing gear and variable pitch propellers. Entering service aboard HMS Ark Royal in November 1938, the Skewer was the FAA's main aircraft at the outbreak of World War II, and it went into action almost immediately. On 14 September 1939, Skewers attacked U-30 as it shelled a merchant ship. Unfortunately, the strike didn't go well, as two of the aircraft were damaged by the blast from their own bombs, causing them to ditch. The U-30 was able to return to Germany with the downed cruiser board, the first naval airman to be captured in the war. Better success followed on the 26th, when three skewers managed to shoot down a German Dornier DO-18 flying boat over the North Sea. Things really began to pick up for the skewers when the Germans invaded Norway in April 1940. On the 16th of that month, skewers attacked the light cruiser Konigsberg in Bergen Harbour, sinking her in what was both the first major warship sunk in war by air attack, and the first major warship ever to be sunk by dive bombing in combat. Skewers would also enjoy a fair amount of success against German bombers over Norway in their fighter guise, being credited with the shooting down of 40 aircraft, and even one pilot, Lieutenant Commander William Lucy, making ace in the aircraft. The Skewers fought hard throughout the Norwegian campaign, hitting ground targets and shipping, but suffered badly against fighters like BF-109s, which was exactly the sort of aircraft they were supposed to not tangle with. A raid by skewers on the battlecruiser Scharnhorst on the 13th of June 1940 showed up the limitations of the type. Of 15 aircraft launched, 8 were shot down battling through the defending fighters and the heavy flat clouds. Only one bomb hit the vessel, inflicting no damage. 
Though it was appreciated that the Skuel was in need of replacement, the aircraft would see use for a few more years. They served covering the British withdrawal from Dunkirk, losing some of their numbers to RAF Spitfires who weren't familiar with the Skuel, nor the FAA's camouflage patterns. They would also serve in the Mediterranean, even having to fight French fighters after that nation's capitulation and helping defend the critical convoys that resupplied Malta. The type's final battle came on 6th of February 1941, when, during Force H's operation to bombard Genoa, an Italian Kant 506 floatplane was shot down by a skewer. Soon after this, the aircraft was taken out of frontline service and relegated to target towing and advanced trainers. The last one was struck from service in 1945. That wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested in military history and affairs, feel free to check out my website, militarymatters.online. I'll put a link in the description. Also, have a look at some of the other videos I've produced. You may find something else of interest. Check out some of the links coming up. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.